Hey guys, me again with another YouTube video. And today on screen you have the Blue Jay Industries M4 PDW Mark IV 5.56x45. Um, this is probably... I'm actually not going to say that because I said the uh, Mark III was going to be the last version, but then I built the uh, Mark IV based off of the real-life version that I have. Uh, anyhow, this isn't the focus of the um, video today. In fact, I don't think I'm ever going to make a video on this other than probably instructions for it. But today we are going to start revisiting the LDD tutorial system that I've um, started a long time ago. Almost two years ago, I think. I know the last LDD video that we uploaded was September 14th of 2013, I believe. Am I right? Am I right? Yep, September 14th of 2013. And that was going over the clone tool, which is a pretty unique tool. And combined with uh, some of these selection tools can get you some really neat results. But today we're going to be taking a look at the rotate tool. Now then this tool, it's basically just as it says. It simply rotates different pieces on the mock. Um, it has a few tips and tricks with it that you guys might need to know in case you're ever going to try using it. But, you know, in general... This is a really good mock to go over it with because of how this mock is uh, oriented. There's actually quite a few different parts on it that do rotate. So to start off, we're going to go with basic rotations. If you have any type of axle system set up like this trigger, you want to select the part of the trigger. And now then there's a few different ways you can use the rotate tool. Either this green arrow here, you can click on it and kind of drag and your mouse will move or the uh, trigger will move as you have it. You can also use the arrow keys. Um, the arrow keys only work in certain increments though so if there's not enough room for that piece that you're rotating to move then the, ink, the arrow keys will not work. Um, also if you're using kind of an old computer be very careful with the rotate tool because it will crash LDD and that is an issue for a lot of people. I know I've lost a lot of hours of work using this tool. So just be very careful in using it. Always save before you start using it. Because it will fuck you over really quick. And it is so unforgiving. Um, now then, the part that I'm actually rotating is very important. So that was the trigger bar. But the part that I'm rotating is this part right here. And uh, basically what it is, is it's a circle eyelet, and then it's got the little bar down here. Now then what makes this important is that when you select this thing, let me move you so I can control Z, is that when you select your object to rotate, I don't want to click on the axle on this part. In fact, I want to click on the ring that actually moves itself, and that's what's going to move the, um, the trigger. Now then, if you have an axle that actually does need the move, so let's take for example this fire selector switch, uh, this circle cylinder piece has an axle part in it, so it has to move. Um, so in order to get this piece to move properly, I have to click on the axle itself to get it to move. Um, so I have the axle selected, and as you can see I have the green arrow, but instead of using the green arrow, I'm going to use the arrow keys. So as you can see, uh, this trigger over here is moving, and since there is an axle over here, obviously ambidextrous fire selector, this one moves as well. So if you have a cross axle piece, and a cross axle piece, let me just go ahead and get examples of both. So let's say you have a cross axle piece, which is the actual like cross piece of the uh, LDD mock you have to click on the axle to get it to move. Now then, if you have just a whole piece, you can click on the actual part itself to get it to move. The axle really doesn't need to move. Now then, what's really interesting about this tool is you can get some pretty nifty things done with it if you know what to do. Uh, more specifically, the magazine curve. Uh, to go over a quick simple little magazine curve for you guys. I'll go ahead and I'll make a little uh, template off to the side. So I'm going to switch up how I hold you in my hands and uh, we'll go ahead and do kind of like a standard assault rifle magazine. 
Uh, we'll put the fake bullet up on top. I'm doing this with one hand, by the way, because usually this would be much faster than uh, what you see here. And this is probably going to answer a lot of questions from uh, people about how I do the magazine. So you have a flat piece here. And this flat piece is not curved at all. So in order to make it curved, you're going to go ahead and grab one of these pieces or its counterpart. I prefer the uh, four studs on top instead of just the two. You're going to put a hinge brick down there. And then depending on what you do after this step, determines how much your curve is. And also another thing. So I, I don't like my curves being uh, too curvy. So go ahead and put in a stud layer and then another stud layer without the studs up on top. And now you're going to select with the rotate tool the hinge piece and then you're going to take the green arrow and slowly drag it up until it can't go up any farther. So it should look something like this. Now then using what I've taught you about any of the other tools you can go ahead and take and do this. until you get, you know, something that is uh, quite uh, curvy. And that's another way that you can use the um, rotate tool. Now then you have to be kind of careful with it because sometimes something bad will happen, but, you know, such is the life. Anyhow, another place that the rotate tool was used was the magazine release right here. Uh, now then, this magazine release does not require the axle to move, so I can click on the actual Technic brick itself to get the uh, piece to move. Uh, the third way that you can move your hinge piece is using this little bar up, over here, up in this corner. You can take and click on the bar itself and then move it, and as you can see the magazine release will correspondingly move. And you can also click on the increments. So this piece will light up green, and you can click on that, and that will uh, also move it. Um, yeah. Uh, also, about the little circles, each of these are perfect 45 degree angles, and then these are 90, 180, 360, and any other um, increment that you can think of. Uh, all right, so one of the final things about the uh, rotate tool what is this even? is it the hinge tool or rotate tool hinge tool slash rotate tool whichever you prefer to call it is this little bar up here now then as you can see this says 89.95 and negative and the negatives don't don't really matter um, you can take and decrease this literally by smallest increments that you can think possible now then obviously I have the wrong piece selected so I'm gonna go ahead and try to fix that so you can take and decrease or increase these so that the piece moves down slowly and then it moves back up slowly. And that's another way that you can simply rotate something. Uh, let's say you want to rotate the entire body of the gun. Find any point on the gun basically. Uh, just kind of click and you should be able to do it. If not, I apologize. Then that just means I lied to you guys about being able to rotate things. Uh, I should probably put all that back in place. And um, that's pretty much it for the rotate tool. There's no special shortcuts for it. There's no special things that you can do unless you start experimenting. Um, like the magazines, if you experiment well enough, you can probably create an entire circle, like a perfect circle. And then you can probably build up on top of that to make some really interesting mocks. I've seen quite a few online, but I've never really gotten into uh, perfect circles because I'm more of a gun person instead of that type of person. Um, so I hope you guys liked this tutorial on the rotate tool slash hinge tool. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. I will answer them in a timely manner as fast as possible. 
And if my comment does not help you in answering your question, I will go ahead and make a tutorial video showing you guys exactly how to do it. And if that doesn't help you, then I'm sorry, but I can't help you. Uh, anyhow, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you guys have any spare time, go ahead and check out my website, bluejaythemeister.weebly.com. There will be a link in the description. Other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and thank you for watching.